We'll start by attaching black 6 aught thread to the back half of the hook, wrapping rearward until the bend starts to turn down. At this point we'll put on a small drop of Zappagap and that will help bond the loco foam to the hook. I prefer to cut a small taper on the forward end of the loco foam and when you tie this in it's important to make sure that the reflective green surface will be facing down. Catch the edge of it with some thread and compress that foam rearward to the bend. Thoroughly wrap the excess. At this point I'll rotate the hook right side up in my rotary vise, bringing the thread just, just behind the eye of the hook. We'll coat the top of the shank with Zappagap and this will help bond the largest of the three foam strips that at this point will tie in just behind the eye of the hook. It's important as you tie this strip in to cinch with the thread and pinch with your fingers at the exact same time. So remember, cinch and pinch. As I move the thread toward the rear of the hook, I lift up the large piece of black foam to double check and make sure that all underlying wraps of thread are completely covered. Thoroughly compress the foam with the thread and just behind the eye of the hook, tie in the smallest and thinnest of the three strips of foam back along the top of the hook shank. Once again, you'll wrap over the top of this several times to thoroughly compress any remaining foam that's on the shank. We'll rotate the hook upside down in the rotary vise and begin to secure the beetle green loco foam to the bottom of the hook. Reaching up from underneath the hook, get a hold of each side of the foam and wiggle the thread if needed over the top of that surface. As I cinch and pinch, I'm going to work to lay down three to four wraps over the top of the loco foam at which point I'll return the thread to the hook shank and repeat this process, moving forward until I've created three body segments. You can then rotate the hook right side up in the rotary vise, placing a small drop of zap gap on the top surface. At this location, I'll secure both overlaying strips of black foam. When you fold over the top piece, it's large and somewhat bulky. Very important here to compress with your fingers to cinch and pinch at the same time to ensure that the foam isn't cut and that your thread doesn't break. At this point, I'm going to come in with my scissors and clip off any excess of the three foam strips in front. And it's just a rough guesstimation. I need a little bit extending past the eye of the hook. I'm going to leave that little bit of excess and clip off the rest to make it easier for me to work. On the side of the body segment that we've created, I'm going to tie in the rear legs. I prefer to throw in a knot on each of the rear legs. I think it gives it an accurate imitation and some cool character. When you initially tie the leg in, if it doesn't sit exactly how you want, just work with it. Wiggle it back and forth a little bit until it's situated the way that it's supposed to be. After tying in both of the rear legs, I'm going to come in with a piece of lead wire. And I'm going to wrap that wire while holding those legs back. This just makes life easier on you as you move on to the forward portion of the fly. And it holds those rubber legs out of the way for the other materials that you'll be tying in. Once I've accomplished this, I'll return the thread back to the hook shank, move it about an eighth of an inch forward, and create the last of the body segments. Keep in mind as you work through this to pinch and cinch. Once I've tied on the bottom piece of loco foam, I'm going to tilt the fly to the side and I'm going to trim that piece just to a natural taper. After I've made this trim, I'll rotate that hook upright and secure the top two pieces of foam. As you pull the top piece over, remember it's a little bulky, make sure to pinch and cinch. Once you've completed this, you can create a similar taper with your scissors on the large top piece of foam. At this point, we'll come in with two additional strands of black round rubber and we'll tie in the front legs. On top of this segment, we'll tie in the antenna strand. And at that same location, I'm going to place a small drop of Zappagap before I tie in the piece of indicator foam. Using the white foam gives me versatility. 
on a cloudy day, the white's going to be very visible for me. If it turns out to be a bright and sunny day, I'll simply take the orange Sharpie out of my vest that I keep, and I'll color the indicator orange to make sure that I have the visibility that I need to see the takes on the water. I'll throw a couple half hitches in to finish off the fly. I'll trim my legs to the desired length. I like to leave my legs a little longer than average. I like the extra movement that it provides. Following this, I'll come in with some clear cure goo hydro, and I'm just going to take a small craft paintbrush, brush this over the surface. The bonus of taking this extra time to do this extra step is that it provides drastically increased durability. Without this coating, the metallic finish will progressively peel off, and your fly is going to wear out a lot faster. Following this, I'm going to give a quick touch on each of the leg tie-in spots with some Zappa Gap. This helps lock things down and give it a little extra durability once it starts to be taken by fish. I prefer to carry at least a half a dozen of these in size 12 and size 8 throughout the summer. 